All right. You got 15 minutes before the beer store closes and your car won't start due to the anti-theft device that's installed on it. What do you do? Option A. Run like mad hell down to the beer store, cutting through people's backyards, making everybody roll their eyes at you. Option B. Send, take your car to a GM and have them install a $500 module. Or option C. Bypass it and don't worry about it ever again. Well, if you're like me, more than likely you chose options, option C. Alright, so what we have here is a car that uh, all of a sudden will not start due to the anti-theft feature. Or the VAT system. I will go ahead and insert the uh, original key. And... Traction disabled, starting disabled, due to theft system. Remove ignition key. You can tell the security light is steady lit. Wait three minutes. Now you get a message like that. Normally what you'll have to do is wait three minutes. Now if your car isn't as sophisticated as mine, um, more than likely you'll have to wait at least five to ten minutes. Um, my uh, old Oldsmobile had this. Uh, it would disable the fuel pump for ten minutes if there was something wrong with the bath system. Never ever had a problem with it. Now this car here I took off the road last week. I, kinda, I come out, out here to uh, start it up, move it back there, and uh, siphon the 13 gallons of fuel that's in the tank and put used to it in a different vehicle so I can actually drive someplace with it. So, what we got here is a, uh, an anti-theft problem here. Uh, now, if you guys ever have a problem with your anti-theft, take yourself a napkin or even, you know, wipe the key on your pants or something. Uh, reinsert the key. If that doesn't work, Take yourself your spare set, usually, you know, you only use this maybe once a year for whatever reason, right? So this resistor pellet usually is fine. So what I've done is I've taken my original set of keys, I wiped the resistor pellet down, making sure that it's perfectly clean and dry because these things are sensitive. If this is wet, your car will not start. So. You know, just take a napkin or wipe it on your pants, just make sure it's nice and clean. Insert the key. And wait. So, I waited the three minutes, I uh, inserted the original set of keys. Still, it won't start. The starter is disabled, the fuel injectors are disabled, the fuel pump actually hums in this car. I guess it won't disable the fuel pump. But it, uh, it does disable the starter and the fuel injectors, I know that. So, <clears throat> now I gotta wait another three minutes. So what I'm going to do now is try my spare set. So, with my spare set of keys, I always make sure that your resistor pellet is clean. Alright. Like I say, your car might not be as sophisticated as mine where it will tell you to wait three minutes. So. Uh, if your car just has the security light, and if it's steady lit, even after you wait five to ten minutes, your car isn't going to start, and neither is mine. So, we got a problem. Yeah. So right about now, you're panicking and you're worried, are you going to make it to the beer store? Oh no, what am I going to do? You're running down to the beer store just to find out that, oh yeah, it's Thursday night, the beer store closed two hours ago, closed at six o'clock. Now you're cursing and swearing while you're walking back to your house in the cold, damp rain or snow or whatever the hell you gotta walk through. And even the town drunk is even rolling his eyes at you. So, keep your cool. There is a way to do this. Very simple. To me, I will not pay $500 to have this redone. And neither should you, because it will be a $500 day. If GM has to replace that, it's going to be automatically a $500 day for you. There's no point in getting all excited over this. 
So this car is off the road anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and start ripping and tearing the dash. There are a few things that you should do first before you start performing work to it. First thing you're going to want to do, pull the fuse to the supplemental inflatable restraint, or SIR, or airbag. Pull the fuse to it and wait at least five minutes. I, pref I don't like ripping and tearing until I pull the fuse. Some people will speculate, well, why don't I just disconnect the battery? Uh, a lot of repair manuals and service manuals that I read up on recommend you pull in the fuse. Um, just cut power to that. Uh, there, some blogs and even some service manuals will say that there is a little bit of stored energy. Um, and they recommend just pulling the fuse, not just the battery. Uh, not only that, we're going to need power in order to uh, make sure that this is going to work properly. So, always just pull the fuse. You know, I have my fuse pulled because I don't believe in airbags. I had an airbag deploy on me from railing a pothole one time years ago. And it's just, it, it ain't right. Now we're going to get a message saying start car, key in the ignition, no start. So let's get to work. First, pop your hood. Uh, you own a DeVille, like I do, unfortunately, pop your hood, the fuse for the supplemental inflatable restraint or airbag is right here, notice I've already pulled it, yeah, it's been out of there for quite some time. Once you pull that, wait a few minutes. Now would be a great time to actually go and gather some tools. You'll need to drop this panel. And it is held in place by clips up here, and there's bolts along the bottom. So let's go fetch some tools. Tools required for this job. 7 millimeter socket with nut driver and uh, a beer or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this panel and get it out of there. Once you get that removed, looks like somebody's already been ripping and tearing in here before me. That's busted all the hell. That wasn't me that did that. I don't know who did. Alright, we can get rid of this thing. Give this a tug. Get rid of that thing. So now you got this bracket here, it's for your steering column, you're going to have to drop this. There are four bolts holding the unit in there, one there, top corner, over there, and there. Now we'll get better access to all our fancy wiring job, oh goody. 7 millimeter socket also for these. Oh goody, look at all this. Be careful. Alright, don't manipulate this wire. This is for the airbag. Okay, so just be, even though you pulled the fuse, just be extremely careful uh, when you're splicing wires in here that you don't go and accidentally cut this. Um, more than likely it won't deploy, but you know, just try and stay the hell away from this wire. It'll be labeled. Okay, it'll be labeled SIR circuit, supplemental inflatable restraint circuit. You know, just stay away from it as much as possible. Just, you know, keep a good eye on what you're doing. Alright. Next, what you're going to want to do, get yourself an ohm meter, set it to 20K, and then take your ignition key. Take the leads, both leads, connected to each side of the resistor pellet, mark down the reading. 0.88. Look at all the beautiful resistors in there. Look at them all. It's 
once you find uh, some resistors, take your own meter and measure them and try and get it to the same range as what your resistor pellet on your car key is. You'll just try and find a resistor that's within the same range as your resistor pellet on your car key. That one's way too high. So once you break off a resistor, take yourself, your resistor, bend the little pins up like that. Touch your wire. And this is what it'll look like once you're done. It is a daunting task and you might wonder to yourself, is it really worth it? Why didn't I just go out and buy new resistors? That's the price you gotta pay when you live cheap. So now that you made your little doofleky device here, just take extra time with it. Don't start ripping and tearing with it because it is very delicate, um, especially if you did it my way. So um, next, go get yourself a pair of side cutters and let's start cutting. There is a wire coming out of the dash. There is a wire coming out of the dash. It's more like a conduit. This right here, there's two wires inside here. This goes to your VATS module. This go, it, it comes from the ignition lock cylinder, goes to the, the, the VATS module. So cut this. You know, there's some extra wire, pull some out. Cut it right in the middle, right around here. And splice those wires. Alright, so once you strip your conduit back, you're going to find yourself two white wires. Now, go ahead and install your little new device there that you just created. Then what you're going to want to do is take yourself your fancy resistor little, whatever you want to call it, uh, let's just call it a dooflicky, and connect them to this end here. This wire goes to the VATS module. Alright, so once you get this all together, don't electrical tape them, don't shrink tubing, don't shrink tube nothing until you know this works first. Alright, so I'm just going to let this hang here, just like so. So just cut this wire here, and then hook up your both leads. Alright, for your resistors, hook both leads up to this end of the wire going toward the VATS module. Don't pull a dumb dumb move and hook it up to this. Hook it up to this. Then get in the car. Watch you don't kick nothing. Alright, so the car is going to either do one of two things. The car will either A, start, or B, won't start at all. If your car doesn't start, take your ohm meter and check out and make sure you have your resistors at the cor correct resistance. If you have it way too out of whack, there's a 2% fallout, uh, or 2% variance, rather, that is allowed uh, for, this to no for this to work properly. If it's out of whack, it's not going to work. Now, if your car does start and the security light stays off, well, then you're golden. If you turn your key to, to the on position and your security light is steady lit or flashing, there's a good chance your car won't start. Now, if you do have your resistor pellet your uh, resistors rather all correct and you still can't figure out what's going on your VATS module might be completely shot but nine times out of ten that won't happen to you okay so right now and there you go Security light is out. Car is a runner. Wouldn't you know it? Now, we got lucky here today. The car started fine. If yours doesn't start, don't panic. Um, check your resistors first. Make sure it's within a 2% variance. And, uh, you know, keep fumbling with it, and surely it'll turn out for you. Um, 
So once you got that done, go ahead and solder your uh, wires together. I'm going to get on that right now. Then you can go ahead and proceed to put install your trim back on and uh, away you go. Happy motoring. So this project cost zero dollars. Absolutely. Zero dollars. Didn't pay a thing. Didn't have to go running around looking for resistors. All I used was parts out of an old computer. Believe it or not, it will work. Just take your time with it. Make sure you try and get a resistor that is big enough that you're not going to break if you do it my way. If you don't do it my way and just go toward go to a store and go and buy resistors, hey, that's fine. But me, you know, this, this saved me a trip, a two-hour trip. You know, it's not worth it for me to go driving two hours to go get resistor pellets. So this saved me a two-hour trip, which would have been 60 bucks worth of fuel. Okay. So once you got that done and ready to go, you know, just... Uh, Take your own meter and uh, take out uh, resistors out of an old computer or, you know, believe it or not, even a toaster even has some resistors in it. So, you know, once you find a few resistors, take your own meter, measure them up. If you have to add more, then do so to get the correct reading that you need and away you and, go. Uh, once you get your car started, take your soldering iron and solder the, uh, solder the wires up, make it look nice, nice. It is, re I recommend personally, um, I have done this before to other people's vehicles, but I recommend soldering the wires because if you don't solder the wires and you hit a bump or you go over a set of railway ties or whatever and your jumper wire falls off, um, your car won't stop, the engine won't shut off, but what will happen is that the security light will come on. If you have a, 90, if you have a DeVille like me, it'll say starting... Uh, that system trouble or something something with security and then it'll say car may not restart well there's a good chance that the car won't restart because more than likely your wire has fallen off so what I personally like to do is solder the wires get some lead on there get some shrink tubing and get her all nice nice and tucked in there electrical tape and uh, yeah then we'll be golden so that's it for today and that's how to fix your old Weeble Wobble friggin' VAT system on GM vehicles. So that's the word for today, lads. You guys take care. Happy motoring, and we'll catch you right back here this weekend. I wonder if it'll move. Oh yeah, she's a mover. No brakes, though. No brakes. No brakes. Oh, there's the snowbank. Ooh. At least the engine runs. R for race. <laughs>